as the director of the CSO Brass, tell us a little bit about what is special about that for you in terms of working with a group outside of the orchestra. Well, the CSO Brass have actually presented concerts since the 70s, but with uh, maybe the last six, seven years, we've decided to present a concert annually. And uh, the impetus has largely been from the player's desire to self-produce uh, a musical program for which we're entirely responsible, um, both uh, exploring the original works written for brass, famous works by Gabrielli and Schuller and Samuel Barber and so on, and also to push the envelope a little bit in terms of the repertoire that we have arranged for us. We, we have um, some very talented people in the group who arrange, like uh, Jay Friedman and Mark Reidenau, and we have some very talented people like Timothy Higgins, Bruce Roberts, Joseph Krynas. These are world-renowned musicians who happen to understand brass very well and have arranged things specifically for us. And uh, what we do is is very much on the edge. It, uh, it forces us to confront what's possible or what's almost possible. And uh, another really important aspect of being responsible for this is we have to choose a program that's attractive to the audience. Um, a program that we can play, it's difficult to have a great program that's actually possible to play. Um, and the other thing is that it makes us work better with each other. When we come to work on stage here in the orchestra, there's always a maestro out the front, and the maestro decides a lot of what we do, chooses the repertoire, and in general terms, chooses how we play it. When we self-produce our own concerts, this is our project, and we collaborate. We have to come to a consensus about what we're going to play and how we're going to play it and who's going to do what and my responsibility is to lead that exploration of consensus uh, so that uh, we go together unanimous as, as much as we can uh, to devote ourselves to the most idealistic uh, um, interpretation of the music that we can come to and it has made us I think uh, better collaborators. It's, it's certainly uh, um, deepened our communication with each other because it's not a job. We don't do this because we get rich at it. We do this for the joy of it. And, and as anyone knows, uh, the pleasure in something uh, comes at the result of considerable effort and sometimes at great pain. Uh, but the joy is uh, even sweeter for that because uh, when you hear, when we finally get to our concerts and we walk on stage, even though uh, we're under a lot of pressure because on a live brass concert, um, everything is very apparent. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, so the individual members are under a lot of pressure, but they're also very excited because when we play in December, um, the, the concerts are usually sold out. Sometimes we sell extra seating on stage and when we walk on stage the atmosphere is quite electric and uh, that really pumps the players up. It's like walking into a big stadium for, a, for a, a major league event and I would say it is a major league event. Um, we only choose music that we believe in. Um, it's no secret that I'm a big uh, fan of early music and Gabrielli who wrote that wonderful Venetian music when he was the organist at St. Mark's in, in Venice. It was uh, an incredibly important person in musical history, um, established dynamics in one of the pieces we do, the Sonata Piano Forte. Uh, is not only important musicologically but it's also a very rich rich deeply scored piece that features the lower end of the brass particularly the trombones and the mellowness and the depth of sound and the softness uh, is, is, is quite striking in contrast to uh, other pieces like the um, 
Canzon Duodecimi a ten number two, which which I chose. I listened to a great deal of Gabrielli, and I thought this was maybe the most joyous piece uh, I've ever heard. And I knew that we had to do it. I knew it was the best opener for this particular concert. Um, it, it was originally written for cornetto and sackbut, and these are the precursors to the modern trumpet and trombone. And the cornetto parts are extremely florid, and to execute them on the modern day trumpet is quite a feat. Uh, they have all kinds of filigree to play, and uh, it, it's absolutely exhilarating to listen to. And when I just hear the, uh, the uh, splendor and the nobility of the sound supporting the trumpets and then the brilliance of all that passage work, it is, it is, uh, it is a real hoot. Um, another one of my favourites uh, is the um, Senza Maya by the Mexican composer Silvestre Revueltas. And uh, this is uh, what I would call a mini rite of spring. Uh, it's based on a legend about the killing of a snake and it's a very primal piece. There's a lot of percussion in it. Rhythms are quite uh, complicated. Um, and it's one of these pieces that gets in a groove and sticks to this groove, a little bit like Bolero, but way more complicated and much more tough to play. And Bruce Roberts, who's a wonderful horn player in the San Francisco Symphony, did uh, a wonderful arrangement of that that uh, I've done in other places, but this is the first time that the CSO brass have done it, and it was absolutely fantastic. Another another colleague from the San Francisco Symphony, Timothy Higgins, who's principal trombone and a uh, former student of mine, is an extremely talented arranger. And uh, he did a great version of a wind band classic, Lincolnshire Posey by Percy Granger. And uh, being Australian, I'm very, uh, have a lot of affection for Percy Granger, who uh, was a great concert pianist in his day. Um, Grieg's favourite interpreter of the Greek Piano Concerto, and uh, he was an eccentric guy, very creative. He visited Chicago several times, concert concertized here a lot, and his his contribution to wind band music particularly is legendary. And this particular piece, Lincolnshire Posey, is unusually um, Creative. He does a lot of very strange things to amazing effect in this uh, in this work. And when you hear Tim's arrangement, it sounds like it was written for the brass. It really is. Uh, it really is kind of staggering. <laughs> 